Hey guys, Adam from realworldworship.org. Um, <clears throat> basically, I, I'm doing these YouTube videos uh, just because I can. and uh, It's somewhat easy just here in my office at church. Um, <clears throat> I want to talk this morning about uh, my acoustic guitar. It is a Martin HD28V. So the H in the HD28 stands for herringbone, so it has just a little bit of cosmetic um, extras uh, as opposed to regular D28. The V stands for vintage, so the internal bracings are to a more vintage or pre-war uh, spec. Whether that's good or bad, I don't know. This guitar just sounds right. Uh, I kind of want to walk you through a little bit of my acoustic guitar journey. So basically, uh, when I was in high school, I decided I needed an acoustic guitar of my own. I was using my dad's guitar, which I still love. It's a great, uh, great Alvarez acoustic. Um, but I decided I needed one of my own, and I didn't have a lot of money, so I bought a cheap uh, Fender acoustic guitar, and it was fine. Actually, like, it wasn't the best guitar in the world. I knew it, but for where I was at as a guitar player, for what I was doing, and really how much I was using an acoustic guitar, it really was the right choice for me uh, as a junior in high school. Uh, I really, uh, you know, it's kind of a fine line of you don't want anything so bad that you don't want to play it, uh, but you don't want anything so nice that you're going to regret buying it later. Um, and then uh, as I was graduating from high school, um, I I knew uh, I was going to go be a missionary. And uh, so I, I decided to get a little bit nicer guitar. And I bought a Takamani, um acoustic guitar, kind of a semi-jumbo. It's a great guitar. I, it's the guitar out of all the things I've ever sold in my life. I regret selling that guitar the most. Um, and it was great. And for the almost three years that I was a missionary in England, uh, from 2001 to 2003, um, I was happy as a clam with it. And it was a great guitar. Um, and then I sold it, and I shouldn't have. But I sold it to get an electric guitar because I wanted to expand in my playing electric guitar. And I thought, well, you know, there's acoustic guitars around the church, and if I need one, I can buy one. Um, bad move. I really think this, if you're an, a worship leading, not, not like an electric guitar player that you're in the band, but if you are the worship leader, you are the, the person leading, you should have an acoustic guitar first and foremost. Because worship doesn't just happen, um, you know, on stage on a Sunday morning. Worship happens in small groups. Worship happens at youth group. Worship happens around campfires. Worship happens all kinds of places. Even just your own personal times of worship. Um, sitting at home, sitting in your office at church if you're so fortunate. You need an acoustic instrument. You need an instrument that can be played anywhere. Um, and if you're a, a piano playing worship leader, uh, you know, honestly, not a bad idea to like figure out how to play like a, a, one of these smaller uh, accordion type instruments, you know, something that you can bring along. Um, but you need an acoustic instrument. It doesn't have to be the nicest, but you need a solid working acoustic instrument. Uh, I honestly have, um, before I bought this, I had a Taylor 314, and um, along the way I picked up, for uh, I got for free a Yamaha, which is basically a knockoff of this guitar. I don't know the Yamaha model number, but it's basically a knockoff of a D28, and I love it, and I still play it. Uh, I use it for camps and things, you know, missions trips where I don't want to bring um, a, a guitar this nice along, and I think it sounds great. So it doesn't have to be like the world's nicest guitar. You just need a solid, functioning guitar. Um, and I've played some three or four thousand dollar acoustic guitars that sounded just. And then I've played some like, hundred, two hundred dollar guitars off brands. They just came together right, and I love them. I think I think my Yamaha is fantastic, but you need a good solid guitar. So I I didn't have one for a while. I just had an electric guitar, and. Um, and then I went back on the mission field, and I knew I needed a nicer guitar, and so I was able to buy um, the Taylor, the 314. I got a deal. I, I had a friend that worked at Guitar Center and was able to get a hookup. So, um, you know, the the 314s, like, that's like, if somebody's like, oh, I'm looking for a nicer guitar, that's like the, the entry-level nice guitar. It's great. That's a fantastic guitar. It sounds good. It plays nice. Highly recommend it. Um, I also really like the Taylor GS Mini, so I'm not anti-Taylor. I think that the GS Minis are really cool. In fact, I keep keep thinking about them, like maybe I should get one someday. But you should have a, a, a good, solid guitar. So I got the 314, I used it on the mission field, came back, and then um, I wasn't intending to buy this guitar, um, but I had a little bit of money 
uh, in savings and uh, there was a deal and so I sold the Taylor um, and, and I was able to get a deal at Guitar Center and I got this guitar for $1,800 um, and they sell for $3,200 now but I was able to get it uh, through this deal the Guitar Center was running um, and it was about $1,800 out the door and uh, would I pay $3,200 for this guitar? For this guitar, yes and this is the point I'm about to make when you're thinking about buying a, an acoustic guitar, like a really solid one, these brand names, these model numbers, uh, they don't mean that much. They really don't. Um, I loved my 314. I thought that Taylor was special. Um, I remember the day I bought it, and I was playing some like really nice Taylors, some like 814s and 714s, like the really expensive ones, and they didn't sound that good. Um, I was in Guitar Center a couple weeks ago to buy a, a, a new mic for the church, and I tried some of their higher-end Martins. I'm a fan of this guitar, and I didn't think they sounded that good. Um, acoustic instruments are just funny things, and they come together or they don't. And um, and so I'm I'm a believer that brands are guidelines, they're generalities. Like Taylor is a good brand, Martin, good brand. But that doesn't mean that every brand is is going to be something. You know, that guitar is going to be something special. Sometimes guitars don't come together right. Um, sometimes they just something clicks and they're magical and not everybody's gonna want the same thing uh, you know there's different guys oh you have to have this because it has this thing but if it's not your style if you're not a finger picker maybe um, if you don't do a lot of solos I don't do a lot of solo -y lead work on the acoustic guitar almost ever um, even if like if I'm in a situation where there's two acoustic guitars and I'm sort of in that lead spot I still don't do I don't do a lot of that um, you know I, I tend to like uh, finger pick or I'll put a capo, like if we're in G and he's playing, you know, G, I put a capo on the fifth fret and I'm playing in D, and then even then I'm finger picking or even strumming something. I just don't do a lot of lead work. So that stuff's not as important to me. Um, when I picked this up, I remember it was the third third uh, guitar I picked up that day, and I just went like this, and it just sounded right. Um, and you'll just, you'll know. The, I still miss the Taylor necks, you know. I'll, I'll pick up a good Taylor and, and, and you know, start chording and go, oh, that's right, that, that's, that's that neck. Um, but this guitar just sounds right, and it feels right, and so I'm really thankful for it. I've had it for about eight years now. And, um, you know, even even though I don't do as much with acoustic guitar these days, it's just nice to have a, this solid guitar. I pick it up, you know it's going to sound good. Now, you see this. There's a microphone in there. Um, my personal recommendation is that I, I recommend buying acoustic guitars without a pre-installed pickup in it. And uh, this is for uh, mainly that you can make your choice then. Uh, I know Taylor has that expression system where they have like the, the replacement to the expression system, I don't know what it's called now. Um, and that's fine, you know. But if you don't have a, um, and I actually think that's really good value, like on the GS Mini or on the Taylor 214s or the, three seri the 300 series, that's really good value to get that kind of high quality pickup in there. But if you're, if you're getting a higher quality instrument, I like to be able to choose, hey, what's going to fit best for me and the way I play or the needs of my, my church or whatever. I picked a, uh, a K&K uh, 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 Trinity system. And so it's, it's two. It's got the under saddle pickup and then the microphone. It goes out in stereo to a uh, preamp that's powered. And then um, that preamp mixes it down to mono or I can run it in stereo. If I just plug it in with a regular cable, it only picks up the under saddle. Sounds fantastic. Here's the thing. This is something to be aware of. If you're running in stereo, even if you're running out like from a Taylor because it has stereo outs, um, I've only really come across one sound guy who really understood stereo and how to run an acoustic guitar with these two pickups. If I had to do it all over again, this mic would not be here and I would just use the under saddle pickups from K&K, which I love. I think they're great. And the reason is because it wouldn't sound as good, but the truth is half the time I'm just turning down the mic on my preamp anyway because the sound guy just doesn't know what to do with it. Or I'm running it in mono because going into stereo is just more hassle than it's worth. Um, so yeah, that was kind of my, my acoustic guitar journey was that in my, in my teens I knew I needed one. And in my 20s, I, I didn't think I needed one, then I made, found out that was a mistake, and then I, I just kind of made my way. I went from a, you know, a Fender to a Takamini to a Taylor to this Martin, 
I've got no plans to sell this Martin. Um, I think if somebody wanted to trade me for like a bourgeois or like one of these like uh, uh, bourgeois, like the like they're real high end. A lot of blues grass players use them. I would trade for one of those side unseed. I've never played. I've played. Uh, I play one anytime I'm in a store that has one, and uh, they're magical. But some of the higher, again, it's all relative. Like I played Callings and Santa Cruz and Hudson Dalton, and I'm like, yeah, I like this better. So um, not saying like everyone's bad. I've played some really nice ones, but uh, it's all personal. Uh, so as you know, you're coming along. It's good to just know. I know I need a good, solid working guitar. And and if you come to the place where you're like, yeah, I've got a, uh, you know, a Taylor GS Mini or I've got a, a Yamaha or an Epiphone you know, uh, that came together right, great. There's no right or wrong. And then you can put a, a really quality, you know, aftermarket pickup in and it sounds great um, if you're moving along you know, music's a big thing for me I, I want to invest in something long term don't feel like you have to get the, the nicest flashiest thing right away like it, it was a journey over like 10 years Fender, Takamini, Taylor to Martin and uh, you know feel free to just kind of take your time with it uh, the last thing I would say is, is there's always the question about effects pedals with this thing this thing sounds fantastic on its own. And um, so I, I generally don't run effects pedals. The exceptions are um, I, I will use a compressor and pedal for finger picking. Um, and the reason is there is a volume drop, you know, when I go from strumming that I don't want. And so if I'm going to finger pick a song, I, I set up the compression to kind of match the volume of a strum and then I click it on, you know, um, and then so then I can keep volume regulated. Um, I don't, I don't want a lot of other stuff. I've used delay, I've used reverb, um, and there's a place for it for sure. But um, most of the time, I find that when somebody is using an effect, they're trying to make their guitar sound better. It's not for function. And um, if your guitar doesn't sound good on its own plugged in, you're going to have some, th that's the issue. And, you, and instead of getting a bunch of effects, you should focus on getting a better guitar. So anyway, that's kind of my, my acoustic guitar journey. I've been locked in with the same acoustic guitar uh, since 2009, so almost 10 years. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really nice. The nice thing about acoustic guitars like this is that as they age, you know, they get some character. Um, I can see little dents that have gotten in along the way, and, and it, it's something you can't buy. Like, this has to grow with you. So, uh, anyway, yeah, that's, that's kind of my acoustic guitar journey. I think uh, everybody who's a worship leader should have a good, solid, working acoustic instrument, whether you're a you know, guitar player or whatever. If this is your main, day, main deal, uh, you should have one. So, anyway, hope that's interesting. If there's any questions or whatever, you can post in the comments below.